Now here is an airplane just about to come into ground effect. Now one of the things you need to know about ground effect is an airplane actually flies better within it's within about a wingspan of the ground and that can cause it on the flare to just float and float and float and that is one of the problems of ground effect. Now why does an airplane fly better when it's within a wingspan of the ground. Well, here's why. Normally, when an airplane is flying along, we talked about the fact that there's higher pressure underneath the wing relative to lower pressure on top of the wing. And any time you have this pressure differential, some of the molecules from the high pressure area are going to try and make their way around the wingtip, destroy lift on top of the wings. Well, any time an airplane is flying, some of that lift on top of the wing is actually being destroyed in that fashion. But when an airplane gets within about a wingspan of the ground, the ground interferes with the ability of the air to make its way around the wingtip. And so some of that lift that would have been destroyed on top of the wing is no longer being destroyed when the airplane's within about a wingspan of the ground and the airplane flies better and that's called ground effect. On the test, you need to know that ground effect is the result of interference of the surface of the earth with the airflow patterns about the airplane. And an airplane actually flies more efficiently in ground effect. So having said that, would you say that ground effect increases or decreases lift? Well, it increases lift. The airplane actually flies better in ground effect. And does ground effect increase or decrease drag? Well, it decreases drag. Now, there are just two big problems with ground effect. First of all, if you're taking off in ground effect, ground effect may result in your becoming airborne before you reach recommended takeoff speed if you don't use proper technique. Now, the airplane will fly, but it will have a hard time climbing out of ground effect. And therefore, if you take off too soon, you might wind up actually using a lot more runway to be able to start climbing. So ground effect may result in your becoming airborne before reaching recommended takeoff speed. And that's really a problem at high altitude airports. They had a guy who took off one time at Lake Tahoe, has an altitude of about 6,300 feet, and sometimes it gets up to 90, maybe 100 degrees at Lake Tahoe. They have really high altitudes and hot days, which makes the air even thinner. The airplanes behave as if they were at even higher altitude. They call those high density altitudes. We'll talk more about them later on. Well, this guy took off at Lake Tahoe and his pilot technique for taking off had always been to look outside the window and see if the runway was going by fast enough. And he'd say, okay, that looks fast enough. And he'd jerk back on the wheel and pull the airplane off the ground. Now, the problem is the airplane could fly in ground effect, but there's no way in the world that airplane could climb that way. So what happens to him is he flies the whole length of the runway about five feet above the ground and hits a tree at the other end. Guy staggered out of that airplane and said, ground effect caused that accident. Well, in a sense, he's right. But it's not ground effect that caused that accident. Ground effect doesn't cause accidents. What causes accidents? Pilots cause accidents. And in this case, the pilot caused that accident by allowing the airplane to become airborne before reaching recommended takeoff speed. Now, here's the other problem with ground effect. If you're in ground effect with increased lift and decreased drag, and you have any excess speed on landing, you're going to have considerable floating. So could ground effect cause floating? Sure, because induced drag decreases in ground effect. So therefore, any increased speed or excess speed at the point of flare may cause considerable floating. So ground effect does cause floating on landing. And floating and ground effect will be most realized during an approach to land when you're less than how high above the ground? When you're less than one wingspan from the surface. So to sum it up, ground effect can cause you to become airborne too soon. And if your approach is too fast and the aircraft is less than one wingspan above the surface, you're going to have floating on landing. So now you know why an airplane will fly better when it's less than one wingspan above the ground.